is dead and another hospitalized from an overnight crash. Details into what happened. And Covington Priest father Otis will be late to rest today. Find out how the city is coping ahead of the services. And expect to pay more on Louisiana Highway 1 as tolls are being raised. Why the department raised tolls and by how much? You're watching Good Morning New Orleans. Thanks for waking up with us on Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stephanie Chainock. I'm Sabika Lee. I was driving back from um, Fair Hope, Alabama yesterday, oh, and well, it was yeah. the, the weirdest, oddest, eeriest ride back because uh -oh. it was foggy, but it was bright, oh, but it was it sunshine, was. but it wasn't. Was this the, in the evening? Just yes. late afternoon. Hank, the moon and mm -hmm. the sun were out, and then it was <laughs> the moon and like, the sun. Like, no, it was like a very. It was like, what is happening? It was yeah, very eerie. Uh, yeah. Weird setup. There's so much moisture and humidity yeah. out there. The water is much cooler, of course. We're getting this fog that's developing moving inland. Like you said, especially here on the South Shore, so it was clear up above that. Okay. So you had the sun and the blue skies, but you had that fog right at the bottom. It was uh, it was kind of weird. Yes, it was. More of that out there this morning. <laughs> I tell you, that stretch of I-10 to me is the gamble with your life anyways you get out on it and so you certainly don't need to be driving around with a bunch of fog out there but this uh, is true that's what this we got true. anyway i mean you know my policy baton rouge to mobile i know well we're safe but hey we're here you made it back <laughs> we though. made it back glad to see you. all right very good uh forecast first brought to you by new orleans rose definitely want everybody to be careful out there this morning though as you get uh, especially into those southern mississippi counties because of that fog that's where it's the most dense at the moment. So up I-59, along I-10 through southern Mississippi. The rest of us here, not too bad. South Shore, not as bad as it has been over the past couple of days or over the lake. So a little bit better news there. Uh, temperatures outside, very warm, of course. Warm, muggy conditions. That's what's creating that fog out there. We're in the mid-60s for the time being, and we'll stay there over the next few hours and then eventually pop into the low 70s this afternoon. Got a chance for a couple of little spotty showers, but really for the most part, just sort of that cloudy, gloomy look. And then we'll try to get a little bit more sun in here over the next couple of days as those temperatures warm up some too. So we'll talk about the rest of the week here coming up in a little bit. See if you check of traffic brought to you by personal injury attorney Chip Forstall. And of course, no accidents, or breakdowns, uh, so it's early in the day. Uh, but the fog is the biggest issue. Now, again, coming in through uh, Kenner and Metairie here, really that commute along I-10 here on the South Shore, I really don't expect it to be impacted that much because we're looking pretty good out there this morning and we're running out of time to develop a whole lot. So we're okay there. If you're coming over from the West Bank, looking good at four minutes from Stump to Camp Street. And then uh, really for the most part, everybody here moving along pretty nicely. Causeway at Chapatulas, no delays there. Now, we had the cones overnight on the southbound side of the causeway. Those just got picked up. Now, you do have some delays here. You notice that travel time a little bit higher than normal because we had to shut down the bridge to pick up the cones. And so you've got a little bit of that backlog trying to filter its way through, which hopefully will happen. But there's not a lot of fog on the lake at the moment, so they have picked up the cones on the southbound side. Good news if you're coming across the bridge this morning. But again, if you're in southern Mississippi, those areas along I-10, watch out for that fog the next few hours. Well, thanks, Hank. New this morning, a shooting in the Tulane neighborhood sends a man to the hospital. The NOPD says the man was shot just after 1 a.m. on North Dorgenois Street near Bienville. He was taken to the hospital in a private vehicle. The investigation is ongoing. Also new this morning, one man is dead and another in the hospital after a crash in Mid-City. The NOPD says it happened just before 11 o'clock last night near the Carrollton Avenue I-10 exit. Police say a silver Honda Civic was exiting I-10 West when the driver crashed into the neutral ground under the area in the interstate and rolled multiple times. The driver was ejected from the car. He later died at the hospital. The passenger is currently in the hospital and his condition is unknown. And happening today, a woman accused of shooting two people outside University Medical Center in February of 2021 will begin her trial. Shante Wade is facing several charges, including aggravated battery and assault with a firearm. According to Wade's lawyer, the father of her three children brought Wade to UMC seeking mental health treatment. She became anxious while walking inside the ER and started walking back to the car. The father then stopped her from going back to the car. But Wade then ran toward the ER and began firing a pistol. Two bystanders were shot. Both were treated for non life threatening injuries. Wade has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. 
And today, Father Otis Young will be laid to rest. He is the Kevington priest who was murdered about a week ago. The funeral will take place at noon at St. Peter Catholic Church in Covington. WGNO's Jordan Lippincott found out how the city is coping ahead of the services. It's the first Sunday parishioners of St. Peter Parish in Covington attended Mass after learning about the tragic fate of Father Otis Young and former church employee Ruth Pratt's. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come before you today, united as a community who has experienced such loss. On Monday, a funeral mass will be held for Father Otis, and his death is still surreal to those who call Covington home. It's absolutely shocking because St. Peter is like a pillar of this community. It's, it's just, it's uh, incomprehensible. During a press conference Friday, Father Daniel Bruyette, the current pastor of St. Peter Catholic Church, said Father Otis dedicated his life to his faith and parishioners. Father Otis is a beloved pastor who served God and his people with a pastor's heart until his death. Although Father Otis retired and no longer led Mass at St. Peter, dozens are expected to attend his funeral Mass. They say he left a lasting impact on those he served. I mean, he was just so giving, so, uh, I don't know, he was just the nicest person you could ever meet in your life. Anybody can tell you that. Jordan Lippincott. WGNO News. And Ruth Pratt's the other homicide victim, will be laid to rest on Saturday. Funeral services will begin at 11 a.m. at St. Peter Catholic Church as well. Meanwhile, the man accused of killing Father Otis Young and his assistant Ruth Pratt, Pratt I should say, is now at Angola after trying to escape from St. Tammany Parish Jail. The sheriff's office says 49-year-old Antonio Tyson damaged jail property in his escape attempt. Tyson was labeled a flight risk that led to his transfer. Deputies say they also arrested another man, David Burns, for trying to assist Tyson in his escape. The St. Thomas Parish President Mike Cooper released a statement saying the escape attempt reinforces the fact that Tyson is a stone cold criminal who should have never been released from prison. He goes on to say our criminal justice system has left us down, resulting in the loss of two beloved friends and members of our community. Tyson has been sent to our state's highest security prison, Angola, where I hope he feels the depth of his actions. Traffic alert for Jefferson Parish drivers this morning. Starting at 8.30, four Metairie Railroad crossings will be closed for track replacement. They will be at Atherton Drive, Hollywood Drive, Farnham Place, and West Oak Ridge Park. The closures are expected to continue through 6 Friday night. And drivers will soon pay more on Louisiana Highway 1 for access to Port Fouchon and Grand Isle areas. Starting January 1st, the Department of Transportation will increase tolls for two axle vehicles to $4.50. That's a 75 cent increase. The scheduled increase is part of the bond agreement made for constructing the bridge. And state auditors say toll revenues on the LA-1 bridge declined 70% for the last fiscal year because of Hurricane Ida damage. That's according to a new state audit report out this morning. The report says the revenue collected was not enough to reimburse the state for debt payments made on the department's behalf. Coming up, the Supreme Court will hear LGBTQ case, what the case could mean for religious beliefs and gay rights. All right, very warm to start the week in the low 70s today, but even warmer the next few days. Details on that coming up.
amendments on whether business owners can refuse to provide a service to same sex couples based on their religious beliefs and free speech. A Colorado website designer is being punished under state law for not working on an LGBTQ themed project. It comes at a time when the court is dominated by conservative judges who have sided with religious plaintiffs in the past. And this morning, a new price cap on Russian oil begins in hopes of increasing pressure on President Vladimir Putin over his war in Ukraine. President Biden wants Congress to approve an additional $38 billion in Ukraine aid as part of the large government funding bill. Meanwhile, Congress has until December 16th to pass a full year funding bill. All right, we're brought to you by Dudley to Bozier Injury Lawyers, and we're looking at some of that fog out there this morning. Now, the good news is not as bad as it has been over the past couple of days across much of southeast Louisiana, but we get into southern Mississippi, still extremely dense fog over here, especially along I-10. Watch out up I-59 there along the Pearl River and then east. Uh, that's where the most fog is, except uh, you can see down here some low visibilities there as well. But the rest of it's not too bad, so you get some off to the west, you get some off to the east. So be careful if you're doing some driving in those spots. Everybody has that dense fog advisory until 9 o'clock this morning. But, you know, again, we'll see probably a little bit more of that settle in. But I really think the bigger issues are going to be in the southern Mississippi counties. I'll show you the difference here outside right now here in Metairie. Not too bad. Some low cloud cover, yes. And that may lower towards more fog here over the next couple of hours. But mainly we're looking pretty good. Now, you flip this with the temperatures here in the mid-60s. You transition this over to our Beau Rivage Beach Cam. Along the Mississippi coast in Biloxi, and needless to say, it's a different story. Now, obviously, we're still a couple hundred feet off the ground here, but you get the idea. Uh, a lot more of that fog off to the east, and so please do be careful driving if you're off uh, in the southern Mississippi or maybe up I-59 today. Mid-60s across the area at the moment. Super warm, super muggy out there, and as we go through the next few hours, we're looking at just a chance for a few spotty showers. I wouldn't expect much. Even if you get one of these, it's going to be brief, light. I mean, not even really amounting to anything, but there'll probably be a few out there as you go through the day, and then we're looking at uh, probably another foggy night, at least patchy fog tonight after that. So, low 70s this afternoon. A few of those spotty showers, warm and muggy, and then we're going to stay warm and muggy tonight with that fog developing. Uh, again, though, patchy. It's not going to be as widespread tonight, I don't think. Best chance, once again, probably in southern Mississippi. And then take a look at these temps here over the next few days. I mean, there's no real cold front anytime soon until probably Sunday. And so we are going to be looking at very warm and muggy conditions out there, upper 70s to near 80. As we head through the middle of the week, some spots could be approaching some record highs by the middle of the week here. Overnight lows only in the 60s, so very warm, very spring-like as we go through the rest of the week. Let's give you a check of traffic brought to you by personal injury attorney Chip Forstall. No traffic at the moment. Seth, take it away.
look out of Florida. Take a look at this. This is dash cam footage of a traffic stop. You're going to see an officer right here ask these gentlemen to step aside, quote, just in case someone were to hit us, right? Pull over to the grass area. Well, this officer might have been a little psychic because just a few minutes later, Look what happens. Whoa. Yeah, a vehicle coming down that road collides right into the other parked vehicle. Just here's a slow mo just inches away from where those guys would have been standing had they not moved. Mm. Shocking, right? OK, well, this just is a great reminder to a lot of motorists early in the morning and nighttime before yeah. the sun comes out to be aware of your surroundings. And also when you're on the side of a road, maybe stand far away from the road. We see this all the yeah. time, though. You know, a lot of times people getting sideswept when they're pulled over with a flat tire, maybe. Yeah. Um, so this is just a great, great reminder footage. Also, an officer was actually knocked down during this crash, but he was able to get back up with no injuries. And so everyone walked away so safely. Yeah, so this is your closer look for this Monday morning. And now we're going to bring it back local with sports <laughs> with T. Lee. All right, so crazy footage. We'll cover the Saints. It's a big Monday night football matchup for the black and gold tonight. The Saints are on the road in Tampa Bay. They must win for the divisional game.
Coming up this half hour, one woman is accused of injuring six Jefferson Parish deputies during a fight at MSY. We have details on what happened. Plus, we are one day away from final ballots being cast in Georgia's Senate runoff race, and both parties called up heavy hitters to rally voters back to the polls. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with a look at the stakes in this record breaking race. Thanks for waking up with us on Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stefana Chainoff. I'm Tamika Lee. What a weekend for sports, and then we're here Black and Gold Monday. <laughs> it continues. <laughs> Football fans are just loving it right now. Yeah, for this is the time. Sure. I know Tulane took the W, which is great news. Hank, so that shirt you wore, that was good luck, huh? That Tulane t shirt? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was it two worked. weeks ago. Oh, yeah. But it, it worked that works. day, it still too. Works. <laughs> still rolling. <laughs> No, awesome win for them. And look, I mean, the Cotton Bowl, that's big time. I mean, that's, big time. Uh, that's one of the Do you know they're playing yet? Is it uh, USC? USC. Okay. Oh, yeah. well, that's pretty big. Whoa. Huge matchup. Big yeah. name uh, bowl game, of course, one of the longstanding bowl traditions, the Cotton Bowl. Big brand, obviously, in USC, uh, who, you know, was on the cusp of getting in the playoffs. I mean, they were ranked wow. number four until they lost the Pac-12 championship to Utah mm -hmm. and then sort of slipped out. But they were they had their chances to be in the playoffs. So. <laughs> Uh, they've only lost to Utah this year. It's okay, uh, Green Wave. Else, yeah. We got this. <laughs> we got this. Uh, I mean, you know, it, uh, anything can happen. That's Yay. why you play the game, and, and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, the trend over the recent years is a lot of these guys that maybe are getting ready to go to the NFL, you yeah. know, they don't play in the bowl games. Right. Okay, and they so go to the Senior Bowl, right, though? Yeah, uh, some of them, but okay. a lot of them, uh, that, those are more for guys that, you know, are trying to improve their draft stock, that sort of gotcha. thing. Gotcha. But if you got these big name players that are about to enter the draft, recent years are just like, you know, if they're not in the playoffs, they're sitting out to avoid injury and that sort of thing. So, so not win. saying they'll happen, but we'll have to, you know, we'll have to keep an eye on it. And if it does, it'd probably be an advantage for Tulane in that game. So All right. it's fun though. It's we exciting. Can see. Yeah, bowl season is here. All right, let's take a look at uh, your forecast first here, brought to you by New Orleans Roast. And we're looking at some of that fog out there this morning, but not as bad, not as widespread as what we've seen over the past couple of mornings the weekend. I mean, it's just Non-stop fog pretty much all day long, especially over Lake Pontchartrain. But it's not that bad this morning here in most of southeast Louisiana. Now, you get over to southern Mississippi along I-10. Very, very foggy over there, up I-59 as well. So if you're on the eastern side of the area, please do be very careful as you head out this morning. It's super mild again, mid-60s across the area. A lot of that dampness, a lot of that humidity, and probably sticks with us through the day because I don't see a whole lot of sun today. So we're going to stick with that cloud covering, just sort of that gloomy uh, afternoon look with the mid 70s, low to mid 70s out there, 73, 74 across the area. Even a spotty shower, not totally out of the question. Warm still through the week. We'll talk about that coming up. Let's give you a check of traffic brought to you by personal injury attorney Chip Forrestall. Good news on the causeway for the commute this morning. As I mentioned, not, uh, not as much fog on the bridge. So they have actually picked up the cones on the southbound side. And as we mentioned a little while ago, we've dropped that number down to 25 minutes. So that initial congestion from the uh, bridge closure has moved out. Now on the northbound side, I think we're still in the process of getting those cones out. And so you still have some delays and some slow movement here on the northbound side. But southbound causeway, great news. No more cones out there. So uh, obviously be careful, but you should be at full speed. Otherwise, no accidents, breakdowns at the moment. As I mentioned, the, the immediate New Orleans area here at Fog, just not that big of an issue. And I don't expect it to be a huge issue through that morning commute. Thanks so much, Hank. Well, a woman is facing six counts of battery on a police officer for injuring six Jefferson Parish deputies while they tried to remove her from a flight at MSY. The sheriff's office says it happened on Thanksgiving morning around 6 a.m. Shannon Epstein, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christine's niece, was on a spirit flight when deputies tried to remove her from the aircraft. Deputies say she became combative on the bridge, biting and one deputy and kicking another in the groin. Through the investigation, it was revealed that she repeatedly stated deputies would lose their jobs or be arrested because of her family's relationships. Epstein was arrested. She posted bond later that day. She is scheduled to appear in court January 23rd. And covering the New Orleans City Council, a new appraiser will be introduced to appraise Gordon Plaza homes during today's Gordon Plaza Task Force meeting. Recently, there were disagreements between the appraiser hired by the mayor's administration and a cost analyst from Tulane on how to value the homes. Members will also reveal a moving expenses plan for residents. That meeting begins at 4 this afternoon. 
And tomorrow, St. Tammany Parish leaders will be sealing and dedicating a COVID-19 time capsule at the Slidell Museum. Those in attendance can bring letters to be added to the historic collections. The capsule will also contain memos penned by elected officials, a collection of publications featuring stories about the pandemic, letters from students of Pope John Paul High School and more. That event is set for 2 at 30 p.m. at the Slidell Museum. And in your local election headquarters tomorrow is the last day to request an absentee ballot. Saturday is the congressional general election. For more information on who's on the ballot, head to GoVote.com. That's Go, spelled G-E-A-U-X. And covering America, Georgia voters will cast their final ballots in tomorrow's election that will decide which party holds the nation's last open Senate seat. ABC's Justin Fitch has more on the last leg of the campaign and what the candidates are saying ahead of their midterm rematch. Georgia Senate hopefuls are wrapping up closing arguments, trying to rally voters back to the polls again. It's time to have our voices heard and our vote counted. I know you might be tired, but can you imagine how tired you're going to be if Herschel Walker is your senator for the next six years? After neither met the 50% threshold for a November midterm win, Republican challenger Herschel Walker and incumbent Raphael Warnock are vying once more to be Georgia's next senator. And both parties have brought out big name support. Mr. Walker has been talking about issues that are of great importance to the people of Georgia. Like whether it's better to be a vampire or a werewolf. He didn't come to talk about hope and change. He came to make fun of my friend Herschel Walker. In the final days of the campaign, Walker still fending off accusers' allegations. When God forgive you, you forgive it. And no one can bring it up again. With one day left to go, concerned that Walker's candidacy and Democrat Senate majority could affect turnout. What hurts the Republicans the most is you can't argue now this is for control. I'm just ready to get to the ballot so I can click that button. Early voter turnout in Georgia breaking records. More than 1.8 million Georgia voters already cast ballots, despite a new law limiting early voting days. And though Democrats have secured control of the upper chamber, a Georgia win would tighten their grip. But a Republican win could stall the president's agenda, possibly giving the GOP an edge in 2024. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Coming up, Gretna gets into the Christmas spirit with the holiday parade. We have a video of the parade plus where you can go to see the town's newly lit Christmas tree. And it certainly doesn't feel like Christmas out there again today. Low to mid 70s and even warmer through the week. Details on that coming up.
deep, deep. I will always sing that. All right, welcome back, Top 540. We're less than three weeks away from Christmas and several local areas got into the Christmas spirit this weekend. Hank, still dancing. Hundreds lined the streets of Gretna Sunday as Santa Claus came to town, riding in a sleigh alongside Mrs. Claus down Fifth Street. Local bands also took their talents to the streets to spread Christmas cheer and the night uh, ended in the lights of the Christmas tree. Mm. Mm -hmm. We get to see all the lights turn on and we can celebrate Christmas with all our family and friends and it's also her birthday. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. and Feliz Navidad. If you'd like to catch a glimpse of the Christmas tree, it sits at the corner of Huey P. Long Avenue and 6th Street. All right, weather brought to you by Dudley to Bossier Injury Lawyers. No, uh, <laughs> no coats needed for all the Christmas stuff this past weekend, that's for sure. It's been warm and muggy. And it's going to feel more like probably the lead up to Easter over the next week or so until we can get some cooler air in here. And of course, with that warm, muggy air, we've got that fog out there again this point. Now, the good news is it's not as widespread as what it has been over the past couple of mornings. As a matter of fact, the causeway is OK. South Shore, I don't expect any issues here. See that number starting to go down there, slide out of Bogalusa, so North Shore a little bit better chance. And especially in southern Mississippi, the counties over here. Uh, up I-59, along I-10. You really need to be careful during that commute. That is where we have the most fog out there at the moment. So the dense fog advisory for everybody, but again, it's much more spotty out there this morning. Uh, not a huge issue, but southern Mississippi, that's the area I'd be concerned with for that fog impacting the morning commute, uh, especially over uh, you know some of the bridges as you're coming in from Hancock County, something like that, where we typically see more of that fog developing. You can see outside here in Metairie, though, not too bad. There's the causeway southbound moving along nicely. So they picked up the cones, picked up the signs, uh, and you're just free, free flowing at this point. I mean, there's no fog really on the bridge to worry about. Uh, I think we're still waiting on the northbound pickup, though. 66 the temp and the dew point 64. So, of course, the warm, muggy conditions over the cooler water. It's what's giving us so much of that fog. You can see the Beau Rivage Beach Camp. That's what I'm talking about. Much more fog along the Mississippi coast at the moment. Mid 60s out there for the time being. It is warm and muggy and because of the so much of that humidity out there, we may even see a couple of spotty showers through the day. Now there's not going to be much. It's not going to amount to anything, so it'd be more of a nuisance. But you know that front still lingering nearby here. Uh, you get those temps back into the 70s. Could see a couple of those spotty showers popping up. Otherwise, that's going to be about it for today. Mainly a lot of cloud cover as temperatures get back into the low to mid 70s. So very warm 73, 74 out there as you go through the afternoon. But uh, boy, I tell you, as we go through the next couple of days, we really start to warm up here into tomorrow as we get back into the mid to upper 70s. A little bit more sun coming out through the afternoon, and that's really going to create these temperatures here uh, on the warm side over the next few days. We'll drop into the 60s tonight. We got to watch out for a little bit of that fog to develop again, especially in southern Mississippi. But how about the rest of the week here? I mean, we could be close. I doubt we set any, but we're going to be close to some of those record highs by Wednesday and Thursday. We're in the upper 70s for highs. Some spots will hit 80 and the overnight lows only in the low to mid 60s. So needless to say, this is not going to be a very festive week uh, if you're looking for some of that holiday weather out there. Mainly dry, though, not really much rain chance through Saturday. And then our next front starts to come in Sunday. I do think we'll see a couple of cool shots coming in next week. As I said last week, I think as we get towards the second half of the month, maybe the last 10 days, hopefully just in time for Christmas, we can get a little bit more of that seasonable feel with some cooler temps. But certainly warm over the next few days. We'll be back with more Good Morning New Orleans in just a couple minutes.
Who we at? <laughs> Black and Gold Monday. We just can't get enough of football. No. Back to back to back this weekend, all about the college football players. And now we're back on Black and Gold playing the Buccaneers. I know. What, Hank, tell us. <laughs> School us. Tom Brady. I know this is an important game because it's divisional and then yeah. we need to win. It really is. Obviously, but talk about this. I got to tell you, there's a lot of bad football this year Ooh. in the NFL. <laughs> is that how we're starting? And, and the, the central capital of it seems to be the NFC South. I mean, all these yeah. teams are just, they're not that good. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like the Falcons yesterday lost the 1916 to the Steelers. Mm -hmm. The Panthers are horrible. The Saints and Bucks are both well below 500. But at the end of the day, somebody will win the division yeah, and go to the playoffs with a horrible record, probably <laughs> under 500. And it could be the it winner of the game us. tonight. <laughs> could be. Could it be the Saints? I mean, yeah. You know, it's, uh, I, I mean, for whatever reason, the Saints over the past few years have had Tom Brady's number since he's been in Tampa. I mean, they right. not in the playoffs, but they've won a lot during the regular season. So, I don't know. I kind of like the Saints in this game, but you can't, you, you can't you know, really no. pick anybody with I confidence. Like the, I feel like the Saints, you never know who shows. Like, you never know what team is showing up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, like, normally you're like, oh, we got this. Or, right. okay, today, we, like, mm -hmm. we never know. We just very like, we're inconsistent not going to win. This year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going open. Going yeah. each game very open. <laughs> uh, I mean, when these, the, these teams in the, in the division, I mean, uh, I feel like I need a shower even discussing them playing each other. I mean, mm. it's just so ridiculous. But uh, I don't know. I guess I'll pick the Saints 23-20 in a wow. close one. Low okay. scoring, close game. Okay. What I really need is at least six catches and a touchdown from Chris Olave. Mm. If there's no touchdown, I need, you know, like 120 yards because okay. I'm down 12 in my fantasy team. Uh. In my fantasy oh, okay. Team. So it's about 11. you and your fantasy team. I've got team. him got going. It. The other guy's done. Bad coaching on my part because I didn't switch my defenses <laughs> yesterday. I could only be down two, but I missed it. So This all sounds very familiar. I feel like, Barry, this is all him talking yeah. again yesterday. You missed me. Need a big game. Chris, football. I'm looking at you. So, oh, need a big game from him. All right. All right. Well, we're cheering on our We're fans. cheering on our first yeah. boys. They're going to pull it out. Yeah, I go. believe that. Believe. Just how Ooh, this all that. go. I believe. All right. We'll Here we back. go. Sing it again. I can, <laughs> what? I like to sing. All right. Break down the song on Get the commercial break. Let's go. Oh, I believe. There you go. All right, guys, we'll take a break. In today's Tech Bites, Taylor Swift fans are suing after failing to score concert tickets in the pre-sale debacle. They accuse Ticketmaster and parent company Live Nation of price fixing and antitrust violations. The fans claim most of the tickets were sold to scalpers so the company could collect extra fees on resale. Dolly Parton has made her debut on TikTok. Parton's first post featuring a dizzying and wonderful collage of the many sides and many decades of Dolly. She joins TikTok as she prepares for her New Year's Eve special, ringing in 2023 with her goddaughter Miley Cyrus, live from Miami. Finally, the days of lying about your height are over. People with newer iPhones can now measure someone's height with the help of Apple's Measure app. Just open the app, make sure the subject is visible from head to toe. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day.
And we want to remind you this morning, WGNO is looking for remarkable women across the New Orleans area. And now is your chance to nominate one. We're looking for women who do good work in the community and inspire other women. We're taking nominations until December 17th at WGNO.com. And we'll highlight some of the nominees in March for Women's History Month. All right, weather brought to you by Dudley DeBosier. Injury lawyers warm and muggy out there again this morning with the mid 60s. Uh, of course, that spring like feel, just sort of that gloomy dampness that we've seen over the past couple of days. Part of stuck with it again today. Good news is not as much fog out there across southeast Louisiana areas. Now, southern Mississippi here along I 10 59, you still do have quite a bit of that fog, so please be careful. You can see some down around Muris as well. A couple of spotty showers not out of the question this afternoon with that moisture in place. Mainly just a lot of cloud cover, though, so. We could use some sun, uh, probably not much on the way here through the day. A lot of clouds, low to mid 70s out there. And how about some upper 70s to so near 80 as we go through the rest of the week? I mean, it is going to be very spring like through Friday. Let's give you a check of traffic brought to you by personal injury attorney Chip Forstall. So far, so good out there this morning. No accidents, breakdowns to tell you about here as you make your way in from the east. And again, the immediate New Orleans area and frankly, most of the South Shore. Not a lot of fog out there, and so you know the commute. I really don't expect to be uh, impacted by that. Now on the causeway itself, all the fog cones are out of the way on the southbound side. Northbound side still there, so northbound side still right lane only of 45. But on the southbound side, moving along nicely, normal commute times, and looks pretty good. Again, heads up for that fog though if you're off to the east.